Are you traveling or are you planning on traveling to Jamaica? If yes, this video is for you. In this video, we'll be going through things you need to know when traveling to Jamaica. So stick with us for protocols, special requirements, and cool pointers. Hi, it's Yasmin Abdalahad from the Jamaican Experience with Yaz, where I bring you a Jamaican experience that transcends sand, sea, and sensimilia. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is about all things Jamaican. So if you like the video, leave us a thumbs up, share and subscribe for more great content like this. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Yazl. Now let's get into the video. I'm here with Corrine. Today we're actually filming on the beach. It's a beautiful day. One of the first things that you must have when traveling to Jamaica is a valid passport. A valid passport. Of course, also there are other entry documents that are accepted in Jamaica, which include, it must include uh, your photograph. So you can check the immigration website, which I will link below, and you can see what the requirements are and what's acceptable based on your country. Additionally, some persons from some countries will need a visa. And so, as well, you can also check that same link and it will tell you, it will give you all the information whether from your particular country you need a visa or not. Or just type in um, Jamaican Immigration, you can check their website and you will see the requirements based on your particular country. So don't buy a ticket unless you're sure that you're going to be able to enter the country because you don't want to book a flight and then you can't enter the country, right? Waste, waste your money. So I did mention briefly about buying your ticket. So one of the important things that you need, you need to have your return ticket. Now, you cannot even enter the country, you can't get past immigration without your set return date. Yeah, so you need to buy a ticket, right? And you, you, must, all, you must buy two tickets, you must have a round trip ticket. If you're not a citizen of Jamaica, you need to have a round trip ticket. You have to go back a your yard, basically. <laughs> Next, let us talk about the special requirements, requirements for persons coming from select countries. If you are over the age of 12, select countries, the U United States, Brazil, Panama, Dominican Republic, and Mexico, you are required to do a COVID-19 PCR or antigen test which basically, I guess, tests if you have COVID-19 and you have to present this to the airline at check-in. Now, if you have a positive test, you will not be able to board the airline, um, so you must have a negative test. Additionally, I know there are some requirements that persons entering Jamaica have to, have to meet now, as well filling, filling out some forms, um, detailed forms, so I'd recommend that you check the Jam COVID website that's jam COVID. I'm also going to link that in the description below. So the next thing is you're already you're in Jamaica, you come to Jamaica, everything is great, you're excited, you're ready to enjoy your vacation. What are some of the things that you need to consider? Um, you might be wondering if you can use your currency from the country you're coming from here. Generally, the US dollar and the Canadian dollar is accepted as well as the Euro. So generally speaking, you can use that here. Mostly though, you can freely use the US dollars. Most places, mainstream places, primarily the tourist areas, they will accept the US dollar. And if you need local currency, you can always, you can change it at the airport or you can change it at our local cambios. Generally speaking, local cambios have a better rate. So you can always do it there. And it's easy and convenient just the same. If you're coming from any other country, I would suggest to change your money to US dollars. So one of the reasons it's also good to leave your, to get US dollars is that you definitely don't want a case where you get the local currency and then you're stuck with it because you didn't use it all. Unless you plan to donate it to charity, which is good. Um, frame it. <laughs> frame it. <laughs> right. Like for example, at my house we have tons, uh, like lots of different currency from different countries that we're pretty much it's almost like we're collecting them at this point because we're unable to use them here 
So the next thing to consider is the cost of moving around. Moving around can really rack up because of private tour companies and so on. You can actually go online and do some preliminary search of some activities that you can do based on the area that you're in. So you will have an idea um, of how much you're going to spend. But bring extra cash, yes. it helps. Yeah. yeah. So the next thing is, let us talk about the different types of vacation, right? So when you're traveling to Jamaica, there will be all-inclusive resorts, there are boutique hotels, there are Airbnb properties. All of them are beautiful and all of them have something else to offer. So depending on what type of vacation you want to have, that will dictate how you book, right? So I know that generally speaking, our European travelers, they love places like Negril because most of the hotels down there are more like boutique style hotels they're smaller properties and they allow you to you know you can walk freely um, or you can experience more of our culture and so there are some tourists who like that kind of thing while there are some tourists mostly you know or visitors from north america primarily united states they like all inclusives they pretty much want a vacation like where they live so there are some tourists who like that but there are other tourists who like to experience the culture where they're visiting so that depends so that will dictate where you book personally i think if you are a traveler who is free and you want to experience jamaica and you want to experience a lot of our culture one of the best better places to stay is negril also um montego bay or ocherios is fine ocherios is a little bit more laid back would you agree mm, not so much like you were saying with the whole laid back vibe um, Negril is more that so if you're looking for just somewhere to kick your shoes off and just relax and do nothing all day Negril is perfect for that. Ocherias on the other hand I like to think of as the adventure type parish like that's where everything is just go 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 you know you can do the zip lining. The but it's a little hiking. quiet I feel like it's a little quiet. Well yeah, I find outdoor has to be a little quiet. There are activities to do, but it's yeah. best to go through, you know, the recommendations from the property that you're staying. Because honestly, I'm Jamaican and I don't even know what to do in Ocherius. <laughs> other than mainstream things like Duns River Falls and zip lining and, and things like that. But there are lots of things to do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and of course, your tour guide or the property that you're staying, they will give you lots of recommendations. But um, we can both agree that Negril is best for a more laid back vibe. Totally. Montego Bay is beautiful. The, 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 the beach here is just yeah. nice. A little um, balance of everything. Right, so a little balance. Um, but I don't know how much culture you experience in Montego Bay. I don't see a lot of tourists walking the streets of Montego Bay. Um, it does happen, but it's not as common as, as Negril. Negril, right? Um, Negril is, is a little, as she said, laid back and friendly. I, lo I love Negril, so maybe I'm a little biased, but, but that's the kind of tourist that we generally see there. So let's talk about safe areas. And when we talk about safe areas, you know, I know a lot of questions come from um, whether Jamaica is safe. I had actually addressed that in a previous video, debunking myths about Jamaica. You can check that out in the cards um, after this video. Safe areas generally mean just stay in the tourist area. Jamaica is not dangerous, but as a new person, as a person visiting Jamaica, I don't recommend that you just go off on your own because you don't know the place. Some people do that, but I don't recommend that. And I wouldn't do that if I came to your country. I wouldn't come to your country and just go off on my own um, trying to experience a country that I don't know. Um, who does that? Really? Who does that? Well, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for out of your vacation. If you're the type of person who just wants to walk around and, you know, experience it without like a itinerary or just you know see but you can ask a local you know yeah, yeah. for example that's, you go to some countries and, and you you'll get a local like a local tour guide or something yeah. and they'll tell you listen these areas stay away from these areas and that happens in every single country that's not unique to that's jamaica true. at all that's not unique to your country at all yeah. it's it's everybody's country there are zones that they would tell tourists not to go Okay. not to visit here in Jamaica we don't really experience violence or against tourists we're generally a very friendly country we're very yeah. friendly towards very welcoming <laughs> to, to, to tourists to be honest yeah. so despite what some countries or people want to say about Jamaica Jamaica is very safe especially for tourists so this is a big one there are people who come to Jamaica and wash their hair with bottled water, wash their face with bottled water, 
take a shower i don't know how much shower you can really take with a bottled water but some people take showers with bottled water i mean that's great if that's your thing um i think that's fantastic if that's your thing but i should say the tap water in jamaica is very clean very very clean one of the safest <laughs> one of the safest in the world we have one of the best waters in the world um several tests have been conducted on our natural water that runs in our rivers which is what we get through our pipes and it's treated and they have determined that it's extremely safe to drink okay so if it's safe to drink i would think it's safe to wash your hair it's safe to take a shower it's safe to brush your teeth so there is no need in using um plastic bottled water to wash your hair or brush your teeth or take a shower <laughs> or take a shower right but anyways different folks different strokes next thing is food let's talk about food jamaica has lots of wonderful nice nice food um it has a very nice cuisine but if you don't like flavor in your food or spice primarily if you don't like flavor because it's not always spicy but if you don't like flavor i don't recommend you to have jamaican food at all because if it's one thing that we like here is flavor we like lots and lots of flavor yeah. <laughs> usually if you're staying at a resort the cuisine there is tailored to what you would be used to so you yeah if you're, yeah all inclusive yeah, yeah usually if you're staying in an all-inclusive resort you can get um food that you're you're used to or and then they'll have the jamaican section with jamaican type food yeah but you know if you want to go out and experience the, the real yeah. authentic Jamaican cuisine. Oh you see how she God. gets excited talking about the food? That's how the Jamaican food is when you have it. Like, excitement. Let us talk about packing. What to there bring? is no vacation without packing, right? We need to have things. So, what are some of the things that we need to have, Corinne? I know you came up with some really great pointers <laughs> earlier. So, right. what do you think? So, let me just put it out there. There is no need to pack a bag for each day that you're staying here there are some essentials that of course you will need but generally you want to make sure that you have a lot of swimwear you're gonna be spending most of your time on the beach probably. yeah so if you're staying 10 days you can bring five to seven swimwear because yeah. it's swimwear i don't yeah. think you can you can repeat your swimwear i think mm -hmm. and you know it depends on your swimwear like i i swim in clothes <laughs> my swimwear is a little bit more close than the average person so if your swimwear is a two-piece or a one-piece you can pack like five to seven for me i would do if i'm staying 10 days to two weeks i'd probably pack about five three. or three if okay. it's like 10 days because you know you will wear it you wear it in the ocean and you, you can rewear it i mean you're just swimming in it and yeah. then you take it off so. and you can always ask at the resort or inquire before you book at the resort to find out about their laundry services if they have any available yeah that's so right so you can do some laundry so you don't necessarily have to pack you want to know something though i don't know what it is but i hate to do laundry at, at resort. resort like so i prefer to take things that um i can like you know a dress that has a multifunction okay. or something like that and it's best to pack things that are not bulky like yeah. jeans and you know that kind of stuff plus you come into an island, island like yeah. you know when you're on vacation nobody cares Shopping what you wear lights. too so you just want to bring something light and free mm -hmm. um and relaxed yeah uh, but at the same time you might want to bring like a nice little outfit in case you're going to have a special evening if you're on honeymoon yeah. or something like that especially and, those all inclusive they yeah. tend to have several restaurants yeah. and because there are several restaurants you might want to dress up depending on the restaurant because there are people who really really dress up so you yeah. might want to pack a one pair of heels if you're a female you know for your guy a nice shirt or something like that um for depending on the restaurant but if you, you know what though i would recommend that whatever resort you're going you do some research, research yeah. um to find out you know the things that they have things like this they will tell you on the website That's true. um so you you can plan for that yeah and some well, restaurants do have dress codes where they say yeah you know, some restaurants do have dress codes um mm -hmm. where you have you have to wear a particular thing so you don't want to show up at the resort and you want to go to wear. that restaurant and you can't go in right but there aren't many places that still do that today that's the truth most most places even though they would prefer you to have a particular dress code they would make allowances and just allow you to be free what else do you need corinne so um if you're going to pack toiletries 
um, you don't have to go overboard there are specific things that you need for your particular skin or if you have prescription me medication then of course that's recommended that you go ahead and do that but most resorts will have their um, toiletries that they supply so you don't necessarily have to go overboard with shampoo and uh, conditioner and a hair dryer because that's Most all resorts. provided. <laughs> no, even Airbnb provide those yeah? things. Um, lots of Airbnbs, um, even cost-effective Airbnbs, provide um, uh, most of those toiletries. Of course, yeah. would you, if I showed up at an Airbnb or any property and they don't have basic toiletries, I am leaving. <laughs> and asking for a refund immediately because that's ridiculous and if they don't give me i'm gonna trash them online because that is a basic okay you need to have those things so you don't need to pack up your bag with those things um at all what next corinne oh important make sure you have a pen I, it's very simple so simple that we sometimes forget it i've seen many cases where um, you get the form on the plane and you're not able to complete it and then you spend a whole bunch of time trying to find a pen so to do the form so pack a pen and make sure that pen is blue or black ink because those are the only inks that are acceptable on the immigration forms you will not be allowed to use that form if it is pink or red or if it's a marker that bleeds through the paper so be safe and pack a pen what about the bag? What about packing? Oh, of course, you do need a suitcase. If you don't already have a suitcase, try to get one that is multicolored or something that stands out. I kind of feel like this point <laughs> is like a given. Like everybody knows they need to have a suitcase, but maybe not. Although, you know, I mean, some you people, some people or... travel with a carry-on, you know, only. Yeah. Um, even for a week. I don't know how they do that. Usually it's a man. Kudos but to you. there are some women who are very skilled at doing that. I I should probably try that in a video, like see how many things I could pack, pack in one a... little carry-on. Yeah. And they don't restrict the size of the carry-on that much. Of course, <laughs> if the carry-on listen, if the carry-on can't fit in the overhead, but you, you can't have it in your lap. Which which lap? Listen, okay. You can have your purse in your lap. Um but that's another thing. You know how many people I see go to the airport and they have to check their carry-on because their yeah. carry-on is too big? So there are specific sizes that the airline will tell you that your carry-on has to fit in because I will see some people try to jam their carry-on and then yours can't fit. Ridiculous, right? Um, so be careful with that as well because you don't want to not yeah. be able to fit your bag or have to check your bag, which means you have to pay for it um, extra if you didn't plan on doing so. Yeah. Okay, so it's like the middle of the day here now and the sun is getting super hot. So we're gonna Oof. wrap this up real quick. Okay, what are some of the other pointers, Corrine, that we need to tell our viewers um, that, you know, to bear in mind? All right, so leave the flashy jewelry. You really don't need to come in the chains and the bracelets and all of that, you know, just Keep it simple. You don't want to make yourself a target either. Unless you want to save something special for like a particular dinner at the yeah. hotel or something. And sure. even so, after that, put it up very good, yeah. <laughs> very well. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing if it's if you're going to miss it. If it was to be lost, maybe swimming or in any other. Oh, activity. that's what you mean, like yeah. wearing jewelry. Yeah. yeah. People lose their even their wedding band. Next thing for your bags. Um, you also want to leave the baggage sticker on um, so you can identify your bag easily because there are cases where someone else has a similar bag or an exact bag like yours even if um, it's a limited edition. Corinne, you have a story about that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there was a passenger in the airport who had like a Louis, Vitt Louis Vuitton um, limited edition bag and she said there were like only 10 in the world and she came to Jamaica saw her bag at the front so the bags were lined out at least she thought she saw she her bag she saw her bag yeah but lo and behold there was another person who had that same bag that was and their bag was somewhere further along the line but she saw the one on the front grabbed it and only to realize that it wasn't hers it did she actually hers. leave with it she oh when she was it. checking up yeah. yeah when they were checking the bag so she walked off with it and everything almost 
But then yeah, that would have time. that would have sucked if she had gotten to the hotel because some it'll always search your bags, yeah. you know. So if she if she had gotten to the to the hotel or both of them, and then you don't know where this other person went, that would have been a disaster. So it's important to keep that little yeah. sticker on so you can identify and just check your bag, you know. Um, don't always be too full of bag. it that you have a limited edition <laughs> or you know or just be too quick to just grab your bag and go. I know it can be frustrating sometimes the lines, you know, after you're waiting for your bags and stuff. Yeah. It's exhausting in the whole travel process but it's best to be sure about your luggage next thing is good to have a document holder um, especially when you you know when you get that those um, the papers on the on the on the flight whether yeah. you're declaring or not declaring something mm -hmm. and um, you know your passport you always have to be presenting them that out. Yeah. right so it's good to have a little pouch or something to that you can everything keep together. everything together yeah. right don't forget your phone charger you're gonna need to charge your phone unless you're trying to do one of those technology detoxes and you don't want anything to do with your phone yeah but you will want to bring your phone charger at least um, most places you can get the mainstream phone chargers anyways but you don't want to be there you just come in you want to call your family you have no charge and you're unable to do that and you know you have to go to the hassle of going Bye. to source one yeah. and get it the next thing is bring a hat and sunglasses. This is Jamaica. We have lots of sun. As you can and see, we're sunscreen. actually filming. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> don't forget sunscreen. sunscreen. Don't forget sunscreen. That's a must. Regardless of your skin type, skin tone, <laughs> where you are from in the world, you need to have sunscreen. The sun is hot in Jamaica. Like I told you, we're filming on the beach. You see the sun is coming over on us now and I'm hot as hell right now. <laughs> so you need to have sunglasses a hat and sunscreen that's a must so if you're traveling during covid don't forget your mask certainly i'm not a huge fan of the mask but i understand why we need to wear the mask and why we need to keep ourselves and others safe so because of that i am pro mask also this is jamaica so you need to have flip-flops or sandals for the beach or yes. something yeah definitely also you might want to pack some bug spray just in case there's also the time of year so when you're ah. traveling like this time of year between i would say june and november yeah. or the, the hurricane rainy season um you you will find that there are more mosquitoes i've seen people on vacation and their their arms and legs are, are like blister like lots of bumps and stuff all over their skin because of mosquito bites so you, you want to save yourself that stress especially if you're traveling with children so finally this one was from corinne i'm glad she said that most importantly bring an open mind yes you must have an open mind when you're coming to jamaica also you know i would urge visitors to jamaica if you have one bad experience with one individual don't go online and talk about it's in Jamaica you experienced this and it was so bad and Jamaicans are this and Jamaicans are that because that's just one experience most people who come here return because they have a positive experience because Jamaicans love tourists <laughs> you know it's, it's a big sector here in Jamaica and um, we treat them well we like visitors we treat them well so that is the standard um, so the, the the one bad or negative experience is the exception and not the rule all right so that's it if you uh maybe there are some things i left out if you can think of anything that i left out you can write it in the comments below also if you like the video and you want to see more great content like this type yes in the comments below and if you like the video leave us a thumbs up share and subscribe for more great content like this we upload videos every week so hit that notification bell and you'll never miss a video when we upload Thank you for watching and remember Jamaica is not just a place, it's an experience. So yeah, we're up. Okay guys, so this is where we actually wanted to film. But we couldn't film here because you can see how much light is coming in, like you can barely see our faces. So we had to give you the garden view. But it's beautiful, isn't it? This is Jamaica.